Hello everyone and welcome back to another session by SSB Crack Exams of Current Affairs. I am Chetana Purav and I will be taking you today's session for 8th of May. So let's begin guys and talking about SSB Crack Exams. So this is a one stop solution for all the major differentiated examinations like FCAT, CDS, NDA, INET. For more details regarding the courses you can visit our website learn.sbcrackexams.com don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel SSB Crack Exams for regular video updates of current affairs and defense current affairs and other trending topics. You can also follow us on Instagram as SSB Crack Exams and don't forget to download our Android app SSB Crack Exams. Okay, okay, guys. So now let's move ahead and we shall start our session with the question of the day from yesterday's session. So I asked you guys what is the PM GKY that is Pradhan Mantri uh, Garib Kalyan Yojana and when was it launched? So a brief knowledge about PM GKY and when was it launched? So there was one person who answered uh, the question in the comment section. So and the answer was correct also. Okay guys, so the answer for this is Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. It was launched in the year 2016 and it is an amnesty scheme launched by the government of India in December 2016 right and on the lines of income declaration scheme 2016 so a part of taxation laws act 2016 it is uh, a part of taxation laws which was passed in the year 2016 the scheme previous uh, scheme provides on opportunity to declare unaccounted wealth and black money of individuals in a confidential manner and avoid prosecution after paying a fine of 50% on the undisclosed income and 25% of that income will go to PMGKY that is Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyanojana of the undisclosed income whatever the black money is okay and that will be invested in the scheme which can be refunded after four years without any particular interest okay so this was about PMGKY now let's start our session with the articles the first news is coming up about the meeting that was held between the Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas of India and the Minister of Energy of Russia. So, Sri Dharmendra Pradhan, who is the current Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas and Steel, held discussion with Mr. Alexander Novak, who is currently the Minister of Energy of Russia, through video conferencing, of course, on uh, in, in this month. Now, the discussions in encompass the global oil and gas scenario and review of bilateral cooperation in the sectors of oil and gas sector as well as the coking coal. They also reviewed there are many uh, several ongoing projects which are going uh, 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 in collaboration with the Russian and uh, the Indian oil industries. So, for example, some of the names are Rosneft in the Vostok project. Novatek supplies of LNG cooperation between Gale and Gazprom, joint projects with uh, Gazpromnet and supply of crude oil by Rosnet to the Indian oil. Right. So these are some of the joint projects and joint ventures which, has, which are currently in uh, process. So a brief review of those projects were, all, uh, were also done. Apart from that, uh, there was also discussion about uh, the OPEC agreement that Russia recently did with the OPEC countries uh, and Minister Novak briefed the Indian, uh, Indian Minister uh, regarding that. Minister Pradhan welcomed the agreement as an important step in providing stability and predictability to the global energy market and oil and natural gas sector which is very very important for India as India is one of the uh, high, highest consumption, uh, high, uh, biggest importer you can say of crude oil. Okay, so this was about this news. Now moving ahead, another guideline was re uh, released by ICAR and kind of advisories to the fisheries sector, right? So since we all know that due to lockdown, it has significantly affected the fisheries and aquaculture sector in a multitude of ways in the country right all across the country in all the uh, cultural uh, sorry coastal areas disruption of fishing activities from be it the open water and aquaculture in both freshwater and brackish water systems apart from that several associated activities like seed productions feed plant operation supply and market chains etc have also been greatly impacted right and the threat of pandemic which is affecting the entire value chain related to the aqua sector or you can say fishery sector and the livelihoods of depending on it there are uh, many many livelihoods in fact there are certain cities the coastal cities of india which whose entire economy is based upon fishery sector 
or the fishing sector right so uh, keeping that in mind there are several guidelines which are released by icar cift which is central institute of fisheries technology which is one of the institute that comes under icar kochi which is based in kochi prepared advisory for benefit of the fishermen fishing boat owners fishing harbor fish market and seafood processing plants in 10 different language apart from uh, in hindi and english right this was done to ensure safety of the workers which is very very important in this uh, pandemic crisis all across the country and also in preventing the spread of the disease okay now let's move ahead to our next news our defense minister approved abolition of 9304 post or vacancies in military engineering services so shri rajnath singh has approved the proposal of engineer in chief of military engineering services for optimization of more than 9300 forces posts in basic and industrial workforce and this was done after the meeting of committee of experts which was headed by lieutenant general shekatkar which had uh, recommended measures to enhance combat capability and rebalance defense expenditure of the armed forces right and the, what was the main aim behind this recommendation so it was aimed at making mes an effective organization with a leaner workforce well equipped to handle complex issues in the emerging scenario in an efficient as well as in an cost effective manner okay now moving ahead So another news came from Ayush Ministry that health and Ayush ministers formally have launched interdisciplinary studies along with a Sanjeevni app. Now what is this all about? So health ministry and minister of state for Ayush, who is currently uh, Shri Shripad Yeso Naik, jointly launched clinical research studies on Ayurveda interventions, right? And this will be as an add-on to standard care to COVID-19. The following studies were formally launched in the program. See, there are three different studies which were launched: clinical research studies on Ayurveda interventions as prophylaxis and as an add-on to standard care to COVID-19. Apart from that, population-based intervention, uh, interventional studies on impact of Ayurveda-based prophylactic interventions and Ayurveda Sanjeevni application-based study. for impact assessment of acceptance and usage of ayush advisories in its role in prevention of covid 19 right now let's move ahead now another news uh, is about union hrd minister has announced modification in pmrf scheme to boost research in the country now what is this pmrf pmrf is the full form for prime minister's research fellowship scheme right so there are certain uh, modifications which were done uh earlier the required gate score to get this uh, scheme or uh, to get the benefit of this particular scheme was 750 and it was a compulsory score cgpa of 8.0 or equivalent or uh, sorry and a uh, minimum gate score of 750 but this was reduced and it was reduced to 650 this will clearly increase the number of beneficiaries or number of eligible candidates in short and that will clearly boost the research sector in this country okay now moving ahead now jn casr scientists fabricate energy efficient photo detector for security applications so scientists from J, uh, jn CSR is what this is Jawahar Lal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research which is an autonomous institute under Department of Science and Technology remember and they have fabricated an economical and energy efficient wafer scale photo detector okay and using using what using gold silicon interface for security applications as well as many other applications now what can it help in it can help in detecting weak scattered light as an indication of unwanted activity so basically this will be mainly used for security applications photo detect uh, detectors are what these are just uh, devices which are majorly used in opto electronic devices and it can detect light and are employed for a wide variety of applications already ranging from be it controlling the automatic lighting in supermarkets or to detect radiation from outer galaxy as well as the security related applications okay now moving ahead a major news is coming from the northwest uh, of india 
सो इंडिया हैज नाउ स्टार्टेड द वेदर फॉरकास्ट फॉर गिलगित बल्तिस्तान रीजन दैट इज द नॉर्थ वेस्ट रीजन ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एंड लद्दाख फ्रॉम मे एट सो बेसिकली दिस इज दिस बिलोंग्स टू द पी ओ के रीजन एंड दिस वॉज अ वेरी डिस्प्यूटेड पार्ट एंड रिसेंटली द पाकिस्तानी सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज डिसाइडेड to start the general or to held, hold the general elections in that particular region and india by this step by uh, no, starting the weather forecast for that particular area region has conferred uh, confirmed that ha- or in other words it has reminded pakistan that gilgit baltistan or the entire pok region is an integral part of india right so earlier the weather forecast was there on the website from 6th may only but on now on doordarshan's also which is a government owned uh, channel it will start the weather forecast from 8th of may right and uh, this will occupy all the pok areas including meerpur or muzaffarabad that is uh, presently in pakistan occupied kashmir or pok region and also the gilgit in the northern areas or north western areas right now this step will also be a constant reminder to Uh, the pakistani government that india will not allow islamabad or the pakistani administration uh, uh, pakistani government in short to take any steps to legitimize its illegal occupation right so this is a very brave uh, step and this was uh, just done to ensure that everyone or pakistan basically get reminded every day that pok or gilgit baltistan is the integral is, is still an integral part of india right moving ahead so let's uh, end our articles with the current covid-19 status in india so as of 8th may till 8 am the total number of confirmed cases has increased to 56342 increased by 3319 just single day number of active cases is 37916 but number of cured cases has also increased uh, and it has increased to 16540 number of deaths is 100 1886 as of now now let's move ahead guys it's quiz time so for first question of the day it is what is the full form of cift which works under uh, icar so we have discussed this in today's uh, session one of the articles central institute of fisheries technology financing or forestry the correct answer is option a right now moving ahead the next question is what is the minimum gate score required to avail pmrf so uh, hrd ministry has recently modified uh, the eligibility criteria for pmrf scheme and earlier the score was 750 but it was later reduced to 650 so the correct answer is 650 which is uh, which, which of the following country is a part of opec so the correct answer for this is see usa is not a part of opec country neither is russia they both have some deal and agreements but they are not a part of opec countries france is uh, not a part of opec country yes venezuela one of the uh, largest pro- producer of crude oil is a part of uh, opec country right from the very beginning in 1960 only so the correct answer is option d now guys time for the question of the day now you have to tell me what is opec country group so basically what basically is the opec country group and when was it formed who are its members please write your answers in the comment section uh, till then uh, the answer will be told in the next session till then be safe take care and jai hind